Now, physics is quite a difficult subject at times, and there are lots and lots of questions that you're going to get as you go through the course, and it's absolutely fine to get them wrong. I get really hard questions wrong, so do other teachers, so do all the other students. That doesn't matter. What matters really is your approach. And the more times you practice questions and you follow some basic advice, which I'm going to go through in this video, the higher chance you'll have of getting the answer correct. Now, my first piece of advice is RTFQ. And that stands for read the question. And I guess you can uh, guess what the F stands for. What you've got to do is read the question and think, okay, does it make sense? Can you visualize what's happening there? And what information in that question isn't relevant? So read the question, maybe underline kind of key terms, uh, under kind of, you know, underline any kind of sort of key numbers. And then you can do the next step, which is to draw a diagram. Now, a diagram is really important because in order to draw a diagram, what you've got to show is that you, you've actually read the question and you've understood what's going on. So in this case here, I've got a ball dropped from a height of two metres. How fast does it hit the ground? Well, my diagram, it does not need to be perfect. It just needs to be something that I understand. Here's my ball and here's the ground underneath it. And what I can then do on my diagram is I can start to add information from within the question. And as I add info, what I can do is I can start reading through it. So that, first of all, the ball is dropped, so it's not thrown, uh, from a height of two metres. So that means the distance between the ground and the bottom of the ball, my height, which is S, is equal to 2.0 metres. And what I've done here is I've just written it in, in SI units to an appropriate number of significant figures, as given to me in the question. Uh, how fast does it hit the ground? Well, um, we don't know that, so maybe this is my unknown. So V, the final velocity when it hits the ground, is my unknown. But there are other things that we can take from this question here that aren't maybe given to us, uh, given to us explicitly. First of all, because the ball is dropped, that means the initial velocity is equal to zero meters per second. And we're gonna assume here, and this is one of my assumptions that I'm going to make, is that this is on the earth, and therefore the acceleration is equal to the gravitational field strength which equals 9.81 meters per second squared. And that's a number that I got from within my data book. Uh, and again, I wrote it down in SI units with the correct units. Step four is to write down an equation. So what we have here, we've got U, A, S, and V. It's a problem to do with motion. And therefore I'm gonna think about my SUVAT equation. So maybe refer back to my data book, or hopefully the more practice you do, you'll just recognize what the correct questions are. So I've got to think about which uh, equation has these terms in it. And I recall that you've got V squared is equal to U squared plus 2AS. I know that, it's in the data book, but you have to write it down. Write it down and then you can rearrange it and do whatever else, but you've got to write down the equation. And so many times students forget to write, uh, draw down an equation uh, and forget to draw down their diagram as well. Start with the basics and you will not go wrong. Now step five, I'm gonna put the numbers into this equation here. Now immediately I can see that u is equal to zero, and therefore I can say that v squared is equal to two as. Uh, so v squared is equal to two, multiplied by 9.81, multiplied by 2.0. I can then say then that v is equal to the square root of these numbers multiplied together, which is the square root of 39.24. I'm going to lots of detail, but it's worth writing down each step of your equation. And therefore, V is equal to 6.264. And there's a few more numbers on my calculator, which I didn't bother writing down. But this is not the answer. So when I actually write down my answer, I need to make sure I use an appropriate amount of significant figures as related to what was in the question, and also give my units at the end. So because within the, qu within the question, it said that the height was 2.0 meters, that's two significant figures. And therefore, my final velocity should be equal to 6.3 meters per second. So what I have here is the correct amount of significant figures and also I've got my units. And that's pretty much it. When you have a question, if you can go through the process of reading it and actually you've got to read that full question properly, draw a diagram that allows you to kind of sort of order your thoughts, work out what's important. Then you add information onto your diagram. As long as you understand it, that's the important thing. Once you've got that information, you can then write out your equation put in the numbers and show you're working in case you make any mistakes. You can then give your answer checking that it's to an appropriate number of significant figures, you've got your units and it looks about appropriate. 
And if you follow these kind of basic principles here, as you go through lots and lots of practice of questions, you'll find that you tend to make more, uh, you know, get more correct answers and make mistakes. So I hope that helps. Just follow the basics. Thank you.